Imagine, all the planets from the solar system had a meeting and decided that Earth should move to another galaxy. Then what? Well, my friends, if Earth got kicked out of the solar system, let's just say we'd be in for a bumpy ride. As you may know, each planet occupies its own orbit in relation to the Sun, guaranteeing the perfect functioning of our solar system. But it wasn't always like this, though. Billions of years ago, planets and asteroids kept constantly bumping into each other. It took some time before each planet found its own personal orbit, and our system took the formation it has today. Now, as you may know, the most important organizing factor of the solar system is gravity. Gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe. And the bigger the mass, the bigger the gravity. The Sun makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system. It's precisely the Sun's gravitational pull that has kept Earth on a steady and reliable path. But it wouldn't take a surreal interplanetary meeting for Earth to go rogue. This is an actual possibility. An unlikely, but real one. For instance, if any rogue planet or star were to travel close to the solar system, its gravitational force could mess up our planetary organization. And did you know that this has actually happened before? Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. The Oort cloud is an outer circle of space debris located on the edge of our solar system. It lies far beyond Pluto and the Kuiper Belt and surrounds the Sun in a giant spherical shell. Apart from the eight planets and the Kuiper Belt, there is another asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Now, scientists expect another red dwarf to pass by our solar system. It's an orange star from the constellation of Serpens Cauda. Astronomers expect it to pass near the Sun in about 1.29 million years, at a distance of about 99 billion miles. This star has about 60% of the mass of the Sun, which would be enough to cause a great disturbance in our system. Once the star entered our system, we'd be able to see it in the night sky without any equipment. It would be like watching a small orangish dot appearing in the sky. Over the months, it would grow bigger and bigger until we'd see it during the daytime. At a certain point, it would become so big and bright that we wouldn't be able to look at it directly. Just like people say we shouldn't do with the sun, but we look at it directly anyways, right? At this moment, the night sky would fill with an eerie red glow. And after a few months, the orange star would start shrinking again, turning smaller than the sun but then, wait, the sun is turning smaller too. Well, yes. The passing of Gliese 170 took Earth out of its orbit, and its gravitational force pulled us out of our natural alignment. Now the Earth will roam through the solar system until it reaches outer space. So what would happen with our planet if this were to really happen? First, the Earth would leave what is known as the Goldilocks Zone, also known as the Habitable Zone. It's a rather narrow part of the solar system where human life can thrive. What's its success secret? Water in a liquid state. Astronomers have discovered that Mercury also has water, but only in its northern and southern poles, where light never reaches. Pluto, the dwarf planet at the rear end of the solar system, is 30% water, but much of it is hiding under a thick layer of ice. If the Earth ever did leave its privileged place orbiting the Sun, it would travel around the galaxy at its orbital speed of 67,000 miles per hour. That's 1,000 times faster than a cheetah can run. Pretty fast, huh? So, in about more or less a month, humanity would see the red giant Mars on the horizon. By then, we would be getting around 44% of the sunlight we once had. If someone wanted to begin a new civilization, this would be the perfect moment. 
with reduced sunlight, it would be more difficult for plants to continue doing photosynthesis, so most of the flora on our planet would begin to perish. A few days after leaving Mars's orbit, our planetary spaceship would face its first challenge, traveling through the asteroid belt. It's a collection of small, rocky, metallic bodies. They're basically leftovers from the Big Bang that created our solar system 4.6 billion years ago. So, in a way, it's almost like we were traveling in time, right? Luckily for us, the distance between one asteroid and the next is about 600,000 miles. So, after passing one asteroid, it might take us a while before running into the next. If we make it through this journey intact, then we'll see the first gas giant in our galaxy, Jupiter. Up until this moment, our loyal moon has been following us as we travel inside the solar system. But, uh-oh, Jupiter's huge mass might steal our moon away from us. After all, Jupiter's gravity is twice as strong as Earth's. If our moon did join Jupiter's orbit, it would be no less than its 80th moon. A bit too many moons, if you ask me. At this point in our travels, the Earth's atmospheric temperature would have fallen drastically to around negative 229 degrees Fahrenheit. So life on Earth would only be possible in very specific places. Most of our planet's water would be frozen at this point, but only on the surface. Thanks to the Earth's core activity, it would heat our oceans from below, allowing heat to escape and maintain some water in the liquid state. In fact, the Earth's core would remain active for billions of years after it has left orbit. In this scenario, microbes living near hydrothermal vents would thrive. But perhaps some life would also be possible near the heat provided by thermal vents above the surface, in places like Yellowstone Park. A great option for humanity would be to build cities deep underground. This would be our best bet if we wanted to keep human life on planet Earth. Ten years after our departure, we would be deep into the interstellar voyage. We'd be over 2.8 billion miles from the sun. Our solar system would be nothing but a distant memory. If you were still living on Earth at that point, then you'd probably be coexisting with great technological advancements. Humans could build entire underground cities using geothermal energy. Maybe we'd even discover how to turn ice into power and create a sustainable and abundant system for fuel. Ice would also be our main source of water. And by then, the transformation process wouldn't be as expensive. Underground crops would thrive, but some plants would be better than others. Moss, fungi, and algae would be some great alternatives, as they are much easier to farm and grow in large numbers. This would mean that most of our diet would be plant-based, as it might be hard to keep grazing animals under the ground. Humanity could go on living thousands of years this way. If Earth happened to pass by some star with a habitable planet, we might even attempt to make a home on another planet. Spaceflight would become easier without the atmosphere in the way. So, yep, the idea of venturing into other planets would no longer seem too surreal in this scenario. The only thing that we would rather not happen to us is Earth running into a black hole. If that happened, let's just say we'd all be turned into spaghetti. Not literally, but we would go through a process that is called spaghettification. In this case, planet Earth, and everyone still living on it, would be vertically stretched up to the point of, well, vanishing. But that's the subject of another video. Fortunately, even if all this could be true, we wouldn't be caught by surprise. Thanks to scientific and technological advancements, we would be able to predict if a star were to pass too close to our home planet. And even if we couldn't stop a star, we would most certainly manage to do everything to prepare. So, who knows? Maybe the future generations will be watching this video, surprised at how precisely we figured the future out.